Welcome back to the Fuel Show. Still to come, Ty from Baxter Auto Parts is going to roll in his truck and show us how to spring clean it and get it ready for the nice weather ahead. But let's jump to our second behind the wheel, the 2007 Lincoln Navigator. Now this vehicle originally debuted in 1998. It was one of the first full-size SUVs. If you want to buy one, it'll cost you from the high 50s to the mid 70s. And it was Lincoln's very first all-wheel drive vehicle. Well, Dennis and Ian are getting ready to show you and tell you about the 2007 Lincoln Navigator. The first category for the Lincoln Navigator is Q-Factor, and it's the gadget or tech score, and if you're a Lincoln fan at all, you know that they're always jam-packed with goodies. This one, it's got the running boards that kick down when you open the door. It's also got a THX certified audio system, and it's got a thicker windshield for quieter road noise. Hey, how can you argue with that? The one thing I just like is when you turn on the sound, I want that big, like when you're in the, you know, the movie theater, <laughs> yeah. It, it actually does it. So, hey, listen, you add in heated and cooled front seats, power everything. Power third row seat actually folds down at the touch of a button. All the amenities you could possibly ask for, but one thing, no backup camera, and that's why it only scored a four. Curb appeal is the next category for the Lincoln Navigator, and if you ask any rapper, it's got curb appeal. It's got factory 20s, it's got the new strong front end, and I'm just not that impressed, to be honest with you. It seems too much like the old Navigator. I'm surprised that you would say that. I think it's distinctively different. I think that they did a nice job of kind of giving it a second generation, and anyone that's a big fan of large, custom, luxury sport utilities has the Lincoln Navigator to think. It's the one that started it all. Now. Yeah. I want to go to the interior, the gauge package. I mean, it looks like, I hate to say it, about a 78 Lincoln, maybe a, a Jubilee Mark V. You know what? That old school feel really does come through. I like yeah. it. I liked seeing that. The side-to-side -side gauges versus something that's all high-tech and whiz-bang. Yeah. It has that already with a lot of the features. Some of that classic Lincoln feel really did bump it up for me. It does. That's on the inside, and I really did enjoy the inside of this vehicle. Beautiful gauges. I really like the font for the numbers, and all of that was just tremendous, but from the outside, it still looks old for me. 3.75 for curb appeal for the Lincoln Navigator. That's one opinion. Performance is the next category for the Lincoln Navigator. Now, here's your word of caution before we get into the motor. It's heavier than last year's model at over three tons. Wow, 6,000 pounds of sheet metal going down the road. Now, that 5.4 liter V8 with 300 horsepower and 365 foot-pounds of torque would feel great in a little F-150 short box regular cab, but behind 6,000 pounds, it does feel sluggish. That is the one unfortunate side of the Lincoln Navigator. Let's, you know, you look at the segment. Let's kind of go through the numbers. I mean, the Chevy has 360, yeah. the Cadillac has 403, the supercharged Range Rover has 400. It just doesn't have enough horsepower. Maybe next year, maybe a couple years from now. For now, performance is really hampered by one thing, three Wait. tons of sheet metal. 3.25 for performance for the Lincoln Navigator. <laughs> Fit and finish is our next category for the Lincoln Navigator. And Although it is well put together and it feels solid on the road, I think it's some of the interior material choices that kind of drop this score for us. And that's what's kind of tough. You kind of get in a little bit of a quandary when you're comparing it to things that are in its price point, like Mercedes or Infiniti. Some of the vehicles out there, and including the Cadillac, have a little nicer finish on the interior as far as, like you said, the choices of what's actually there. It's not that anything's really poorly put together. It's just a little bit a little bit lacking. They could have brought a little bit more metal, a little bit more something to the table, and that unfortunately does show in the score. Yeah, I mean, we like the way that it looks inside and out, but it's those material choices that are going to drop the score to 3.75 for fit and finish. Now drivability, the final category for the Lincoln Navigator, and if you look for big and comfortable and every bell and whistle available, then this might be for you. Well, sure, you're only going to shop a few different vehicles if you're looking for this type of vehicle, and you got to remember that the Lincoln Navigator was the originator of this class. I mean, you're going to shop the Escalade, the GL450, maybe the QX56 from Infiniti, but when it comes down to it, if you're an American car buyer and you're looking for big luxury SUV, it comes down to two things. Are you a Ford fan? Or are you a Chevy fan? Because you're either going to buy an Escalade or you're going to buy a Navigator. Overall, if this is what you're looking for, it will give you everything you want. Yep, four for drivability for the Lincoln Navigator. Let's see how Dennis Neen scored the 2007 Lincoln Navigator. For Q-Factor, they gave it a 4.0.
In curb appeal, how it looks from the curbside, they gave it a 3.75. In performance, it got a 3.25. And in fit and finish, a 3.75. Finally, in drivability, a 4.0. The total score for the 2007 Lincoln Navigator was 18.75 out of a possible 25. When fuel returns, Ty from Baxter Auto Parts is going to be spring cleaning.